broke the shirt. Fortunately, I broke the shirt. I'm not exactly sure what happened right now. But... Hey everyone, Dan here, Sharpie T. Task today, knock down some more weeds. It's getting that time of the year um, to kind of make a couple of paths, clear some things out, and uh, I'm going to do a little spot here quick. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys that are subscribing, it means a lot. So with the goal today was a really simple task. It was to go out and knock down these weeds that were anywhere from, I don't know, six to 10 feet tall. I wanted to just get this crap cleared out of the way and it was fairly dry out. The ground just had a little bit of rain too, so the tires were gripping uh, fairly well but it is fall right now and things are starting to dry up, shall we say. So when you drive over things, they're kind of tending to, tending to stay down. And as you know, they really don't really make a lot of tracks when you're going inside of a woods, but that is not what my intent was. I was purposely going around and around and around in circles to try to clear everything out just to clear this area out. Um, I actually like the weeds that I do have in that area because it harbors a lot of wildlife in the summer and I don't want to deal with it. But in the winter I can get a little bit better uh, drifts that happen there when I knock all these trees down so I can play a little bit more with the snowmobile and the sherp and the four-wheeler and all the other things. So everything was going fairly well, right? We're just running around here mowing things down, getting everything all cleared up. And again, the ground was fairly grippy, so when that happens, the brake is working extra hard. Um, and sometimes the brake discs do get some oil on it, so it does kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of catch and let go. So uh, it's not always just 100% perfect, and it's like perfectly, you know, accurate when you're pulling on stuff. It does move around a little bit. As you can see, it is true skid steering. What's coming up here is that black thing is a piece of uh, plastic landscaping uh, barrier. Kind of flopped up. I thought that was neat, so I just put it in slow motion for you. And we're coming up here to the time as to when the actual caliper did break. Nothing fancy, nothing neat. The shirt just done broke. And it was. What was that? Well, everybody, it worked, um, but unfortunately, I broke the shirt. I'm not exactly sure what happened right now, but as I pull back on one of the levers, it's really not engaging anymore, um, so we will have to see. So I'll try to show you what's going on here. So if I start it up and I have it in neutral, if I pull on this lever, it goes all the way back. So I think a spring might, have, something is not right. I don't know what it is yet. This one, see how it stops? So what I have a tendency to do is put the seat belts right on the seats just to make sure that they don't pop up in the air. I never use the seat belts again. Again, the reason we're taking this damn thing apart right now is because something is not right on one of the sides. We're going to get to the engine compartment, which is right back here. So we got to take off some covers. So if you look right here, so you just unsnap these things. Pull that up. It's got some Velcro that's right here on the side. Pull that up. 
on both sides. And then we'll pop around in the back. Alrighty, so we're going to put this out. That was so the close. first thing we want to do here is take this baby, get this off. And what I always do too is I have, this one is insane heavy. So if I'm driving this by myself, it has a tendency to balance out the shirt more. So everything that I have is in here. This probably weighs 100 plus pounds. Maybe not that much. So I bet it's damn close to 100. This one I think is empty. I don't remember. Yeah, this is empty. Nice unit. And they are, I think, waterproof, but I've never really tried it yet. Oh. So this is a little heavier. I don't think it weighs two pounds. Take off. This, again, there's some more clips up in here. straps just some small clips on them excuse me there's eight there's two on the front two on the back and there's also two up here at the top on each side this you got to be kind of careful of because it's aluminum it's kind of sharp on the edges. I was smart right now, I have gloves on. This also comes off, which is nice. I'm going to take a look at the front. So, again, just pull off this Kadura fabric stuff. I just gotta pull up this board. This is kind of a pain. This can't got it. Pull that one out. And this right here. Gotta pull that behind. Let me quickly try to describe how the Sherp steering works. As you pull back that lever, that top bar moves up in the air and stays at that same height the entire travel of the lever. That activates the clutch. The bottom rod that was going in there is activating the brake. The farther you pull back, the more brake pressure is applied. What was happening with the Sherp is the brake was not offering any resistance whatsoever. I broke the brake caliper um, frame, I'll say that. Uh, so the Sherp does not turn to the right right now. The clutch and everything works fine, um, but uh, I have no brakes on one side, so it means I couldn't turn to the right. I was able to contact Sherp USA. They answered my phone call like always, uh, basically immediately. Um, got a new one on order, should be coming here soon. So what we're looking at here again is the mechanism that is used to drive the Sherp. Again, they have this main chain that drives this shaft right here. And then on this side, there is a clutch. 
and there is a break. Uh, you pull back halfway on the Sherp and it, it clutches this side so this side doesn't spin and then it puts the brake on. On this side what happened is, is this right here is the brake caliper and this part right here broke off right there which holds the brake pad. So this is broke off, so I've got to take this off. And unfortunately, I have to take off this main drive chain. And the reason being is, is the bolt is like right behind where this chain is down here. It's very difficult to see that, but I got to take this chain off in order to put an Allen wrench into here to be able to pull the bolts off so I can pull off this whole mechanism. So what I have to do is take out that bolt right there. And that bolt right there is in the way of that chain. So I got to take that main chain off of the Sherp and then take out that bolt. And there's one more bolt on the bottom. And uh, pretty much we're raring to go. We also have to take off this clamp, I think. I think I have to take off this one. And this one also. Um, we'll kind of go from there So I'll get this apart. We're coming to the end of the video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Any questions, let me know. I'll answer them as best you can. I don't know how well I'm going to do putting it back together again and being able to videotape. We will see. Got to get ready for my next event. Take care, everyone.